Eight an entire army in a day? Challenge accepted. Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. If you're new here, welcome. We have new painting and gaming videos every week, so subscribe so you don't miss out. If you are in the miniature hobby, you probably know and the new edition of Warhammer 40k launches this weekend with the Indomitus box. My local game store, looking for games, got in their demo copy and asked me to paint the armies within it. The goal was to make them look unique so we knew that they were the store's army, so we went with a neon day glow for the marines and a color shift for the necrons. This video was going to be the painting of all of those armies, which took me three days total, most of it was on the marines. But, me being me, I forgot to hit record for most of the steps of the marines. But I have all the footage for the necrons, so that's what today's video is going to be, the painting of those necrons, which took me just a few hours. The way I was able to paint them so fast was with my airbrush. Almost every step on these is with the airbrush. There's a little bit of dry brushing and the very last step I'm going to go in with the brush for some detail. But other than that, everything is with the airbrush. So it's going to show you how with some practice and control, you can get some pretty impressive effects with an airbrush. Just a note before we get started. I painted these at the store and I had brought my rig over there and the camera mount was a little bit off. So the first few steps are going to be slightly at the top of the frame, barely in frame. But after that, you should be able to see what I'm doing pretty well. So with that in mind, let's grab our airbrush and get right into it. So the first step, we're using Bubblegum Crisis from Turbo Dork. It shifts from a cool pink color to like a copper. With these paints, if you've never used them, you want to kind of give two or three thin coats of them to get the full effect. So I'm just spraying, moving on to the next miniature, spraying, move on to the next miniature. But we're going to go through all the miniatures twice to make sure we have a nice coat that shifts well. Overspray at this point is not that big a deal because, again, we're painting everything with the airbrush. So if we spray on something, it's just going to get sprayed over top of in the next step. Next up, we're going to use Mother Load, which is another uh, Turbo Shift paint. This is almost like a pearlescent color. It's pretty cool. So we're using this to highlight. So just take a high angle and spray all the parts of the miniature. Now we're going to move on to all the weapon blades and we're going to use Ice to Never. It's got like a teal to like an indigo blue shift. To it so here i'm just spraying the little blades on the end of all the warriors but all of the blades are going to get this on all the characters and that sort of thing try to spray at an angle where you're avoiding what we already painted so you can kind of see i'm trying to spray it in a way where i'm avoiding the already painted areas and the overspray is just going to go away from the miniature So now we're going to use Malum Malice again by Turbo Dork. This is just a metallic though. It's not one of their turbo shifts. It's a light green and we're just kind of spraying it on all those blades to highlight them and kind of use the edge of the blades. And again, we're spraying away from the body of the miniature so we don't get too much overspray on it. And this step is where my lack of planning costed me some time, but we're also going to use the mother load to highlight the blades. So if you are following along, you should probably just highlight everything at the same time with mother load instead of separately like I did. It's no big deal, just put the mother load back in the airbrush and highlight the blade at parts. Now this step is either the height of efficiency or laziness, depending on who you asked, but I'm using my airbrush to spray all the gun casings and cabling on these miniatures black. 
You could probably be more precise with a brush, but with some nice trigger control and spraying from the right direction, you should be able to paint this without too much overspray on the miniature. And if you get a little bit of overspray, it's no big deal. It's just going to look like a little bit of shading. But again, we're just painting the gun casings and cablings with black. I'm using a primer because it was close to me, but any black paint will do. Next up, I'm going to move on to the basing. I'm using a mix of Viejo Gray Surface Primer, Payne's Gray Ink, and Transparent Raw Sienna Ink. The reason I have this weird mix is I was just trying to get a color that looked good with things I had near me, which was primers and inks mainly. So you're going to get a little overspray on the legs of the miniature, but that's okay. It's just going to make it look dusty. Just spray the entire base with this color. Next up, I'm very quickly using transparent raw umber ink and spraying kind of under the models to A, if there's too much overspray on the legs, hide it, and B, just add a little bit of color variation to the bases. And now I'm going to go in with the Viejo Gray Surface Primer and just add some highlights to the bases. The basing material was not very well attached to these bases, or I would have just dry brushed a light gray on, but it would have knocked most of the basing material off at this point, so I just used the airbrush and put a few highlights here and there. Again, I'm just using a primer because it was the closest thing I had to me. You can just use a paint here, the primer is not necessary. Now we're actually going to use an actual paintbrush, and we're just going to dry brush Speed Metal over the entire mini. So, all of the colors we've already put on there, we're just getting this. The only thing you're not dry brushing with is the base. Everything else is getting dry brushed this color. So the blades, the body, the black bits. It's really going to help the black bits pop a little bit by having these silver edges to them. And the last thing we're going to do to these miniatures is add a glow effect. And I'm using Eldritch from P3, which I'm surprised I have not used in a video so far because it is my favorite paint for glow effects. But we're just spraying any of the orbs. Uh, we're going to use some care and actually spray in the eyes of the miniature as well, as you can see I'm doing here. And if we get overspray here, it's actually not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because we're trying to make it look like it's glowing. So any overspray is just going to be the glow emanating from the orb or the eyes or whatever it is we're painting. And next up, I just mixed a little bit of white ink in with the Eldritch and we're highlighting the glow effect we already did so we're trying to spray in the center of what we sprayed previously the way we do that is we keep the airbrush closer to the mini than we did last time so our we have a tighter spray so you can kind of see i'm getting in tight here so i get a nice tight spray of that lighter color in the center of what i've already painted with the pure eldritch And our very last step, I'm just going to go in with a brush and use my favorite white replacement, Sickly Skin, and just kind of dot highlights in the center of those glowing orbs and further the glow effect by making it have a bright center.
And aside from the fact that I forgot to paint the base rims, these minis are done. If you may notice that there's some mold lines and bits of sprue still on some of these minis, like the Destroyer Lord's head, I didn't put these models together and by the time I noticed that I was too far in the painting process to just easily fix it so I just left it as it was. They look fine. If you get up close you'll notice that they have some issues but with the speed praying process we did they are not going to hold up to close inspection anyway. But they look really cool on the tabletop. I really like these new Necron models and I'm splitting a box with a buddy and I'm going to have Necrons of my own to paint which I'm going to be doing in a cyberpunk comic book scheme. I look forward to future videos of seeing some cool cyberpunk Necrons. I love that War of the Worlds Walker looking reanimator model. It's just incredible looking. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I will answer them as best I can. I actually have some plans for upcoming videos, a little bit more gaming content outside of what we normally do, which is just the painting related stuff. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that stuff. I'm also going to leave a few videos over here that might interest you. And until next time, keep on gaming and paint your minis.